So AMD claims to have the world's fastest gaming processor with their 5800X3D. And as of the timing time of filming here on Tuesday morning, the review embargo for this should lift on Thursday to my knowledge. But wait, how could there already be a full gaming review? Well, as I reported on a couple of days ago, there's a Peruvian website who got their hands on a 5800X3D, but through some kind of retail market, not through an AMD review sample, which means they have assigned no paperwork, they are not under review embargo, and at that time, well, when I did my previous video, they just had one gaming benchmark up. They had some uh, synthetic benchmarks, productivity benchmarks, but they only had one gaming benchmark up. And in that one, which was kind of a weird test, it was 720p custom low settings, which I get the idea to isolate the CPU, but you know, some graphic settings do impact CPU usage as well, so this isn't super you know, perfect. And they also actually had a 3090 Ti on their Intel system, but a, I believe it was a, a 3080 Ti on their Ryzen system. Now, despite that, they actually saw a huge jump on performance from the uh, 5800X 3D, completely destroying the 12900K KF and even the KS. Now notice that AMD, when they made these claims, they were placing it up against the 12900K, and they were very clear that in some games they would tie, but in other games we would see a 10 to 20% jump in performance uh, over the 12900K. Notice not the KS, so Intel kind of beat AMD to the punch with their updated world's fastest gaming CPU. But one thing that's weird here is that these don't really compete in terms of pricing and even in terms of their general use case. The 12900K and the 12900KS are both far better all around CPUs and they're also far more expensive. The 5800X 3D in some cases is actually worse than the 5800X, the non-3D version that we've had for a long time. Now, from this website that also is leaking these gaming benchmarks, they also uh, initially came, and again, this, this is in, we can, we can Google translate here um, if you're trying to read it. Uh, but they, I, and I did already report on this, did some synthetic benchmarks. And one of the things that we, we noticed here, and I don't wanna just take all of their data and dwell on it too much, is that it's actually in some cases slower than the 5800X because it runs at slightly lower clock speeds. Also, the 5800X does not officially support any kind of overclocking. The idea here is that by adding that layer of 3D cache on top, I believe they're running into some kinds of thermal issues with the actual design of the chip, having to limit its uh, you know, th uh, voltage and, and all that. We don't have all the full details. I wonder if some of the big channels that do a full review in a couple of days will have more details on that. But where this shines and what AMD is clearly targeting here is world's fastest gaming processor. So a lot of people are just buying their CPU for gaming and it's irrelevant to them whether the 12900K can smash it in, in you know, 4K video rendering, right? Uh, if it's like, I'm just a gamer. And what's cool then is that the 5800X 3D is actually a lot cheaper. It's still $440 MSRP, but the 12900K is like $580 and the KS version, isn't that getting up into like the $700 range or something insane like that? I don't even remember off the top of my head because it, it seems silly to pay that much unless you're chasing world record overclocks. So with all that being said, let's check out some of, now I don't wanna do all of them, I'll link this in my, uh, in my description. They, they tested at 1080p and 720p and used higher settings this time. And let, let's look, I think they actually used the same graphics card on both systems. So what are they using here? Well, one thing that jumps out to me is that the systems are pretty much equivalent. This is, this is a fair comparison. Although the RAM is the biggest thing that jumps out to me. They're using a four by eight configuration of 3200 CL14, Samsung B die they claim, uh, a RAM. And they're using that on both systems. So it is the same on both systems. But notice the speed is only 3200. I mean, it is CL14, so this is by no means bad RAM. But there are, you know, 
Intel systems that could be running, you know, fast DDR5, or you could run faster DDR4. You could run faster DDR4 on the 5800X3D uh, as well. So the point is here, it's at least even. They have the same RAM, even if it's maybe not the highest end or, you know, pushing Intel with see what DDR5 does. So, and honestly, the introduction of the, them supporting DDR5 kind of complicates these types of comparisons anyway. Uh, the rest of the system looks looks fine, right? Um, pretty good coolers on on both of them. I, 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 both of them are 360 millimeter AIOs that seem to be pretty decent qualities. Uh, same kind of power supply, all of that. Now I'm gonna look at the 1080p data because um, 720p really does push the CPU limits. But honestly, using CPUs like these and graphics cards like these at 1080p, even at the at the maximum settings, which is what they said that they did is already kind of pushing the boundaries of what is at all realistic um, in, a, in a gaming PC. <laughs> Although I understand that some people play eSports titles at 1080p low or even maybe 720p and you just want all the frames. But anyway, uh, this is their, their suite of games. I'm gonna show the 1080p results. I don't wanna show uh, their entire review. I feel like uh, that would be a little bit too much. Um, in terms of uh, not giving you a reason to actually check out their actual page, which I think you should if you want to see all the data. So notice that in this, oops, uh, more um, full review here, they have it up against the 12900 KF. This is not the KS, that is important, okay? So this is not the KS this time, just the KF, uh, which is still great. Um, but like, keep in mind, Intel does have a faster one out there. Now in this first one, Assassin's Creed Origins at 1080p Ultra, we're actually seeing what I would call a tie, although if you had to declare a winner, it would be Intel. So interesting. Borderlands 3 at 1080p at their maximum settings DX12. Once again, I would call this a tie, although if you had to declare a winner, it would be Intel. It's margin of error though, guys, that this is a tie, okay? Um, oops, I uh, gotta go to this way. All right, now control, this is interesting. While the average frame rates are a tie, the 1% lows are actually a somewhat reasonable lead for the uh, 5800X3D. So here's where maybe that, that 3D uh, V cache is doing something. Now, I wouldn't say though that, you know, if your frame rate suddenly dipped from 172 to 155, you would actually find that all that noticeable, especially if you're on like a 144 hertz monitor. I know some people have like a 165 or even a 240. So, I mean, but, but would you actually feel that difference, guys? <laughs> anyway, bit of a win there. Um, Death Stranding though, we're seeing a bit more significant. In this one, now this one, they've got the Ryzen on top and the, the Intel on the bottom. So I feel like they, they kind of flipped their uh, chart here. That's, I felt like uh, they even mentioned this at the beginning of the review. They were a little bit rushed to get this out when they found out how soon the review embargo is. Cause their whole idea here is to get the review out before other channels do, right? So that people like me report on it and link to it. Anyway, again, you can check it out. Um, so we've got the uh, 188 on the 1% lows versus 204. Again, those are both so good, I'm not sure you're really gonna notice it, but that is a measurable win for the Ryzen processor and even the averages are 10, uh, 10 frames higher, which is less than 10% since we're talking about numbers over 200. F1 2020 is once again, basically a tie. I'll <laughs> with the, you know, the Ryzen slightly ahead on the lows, slightly behind on the average, but they're both so close, it's within margin of error, it's a tie. Uh, Final Fantasy 15, no game works, 1080p Ultra, now check this one out. 144 on the 1% lows versus 114, that might be noticeable. And then the average is 217 versus 168. Now, one thing I wanna bring up is that this Final Fantasy 15 is one of the titles that AMD claimed a, a large victory. And in fact, it's the one they claimed their largest victory in. They went with 1.2X performance there. So 20% lead and you know, I'd say that that 
this absolutely delivers on that and then maybe more so. Now, the exact scene of the game that AMD was benchmarking could be a different scene of the game than this channel is benchmarking, which would explain also that uh, difference. Okay, Metro Exodus, we're once again seeing basically a tie in the averages, although the 1% lows are better for uh, the 5800X3D. And I'll tell you right now, I usually can feel the difference between 80 FPS and 90 FPS. To me, 90 FPS, especially in a first person shooter, does actually feel smoother than 80. And so that one, I would say, is the first one that I would <laughs> maybe actually be able to tell when playing the game. <laughs> Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 1080p Ultra, no RTX. RTX does use the CPU though, by the way, although it might make you more, like, it does increase CPU load, but it would also more likely to GPU bottleneck you. So I get why they wouldn't have it on. Anyway, in this one, we're seeing a very large win for the 5800X 3D. Although again, both of them producing such high frame rates, it's gonna be hard to actually feel the difference. But 164 up to 181 on the averages, but 120 up to 153 on the 1% lows. And again, on CPUs that produce this high of frame rates, I think the most noticeable thing is going to be the 1% lows or even the 0.1% lows if they were tracking it. It's those little stuttery dips below your maybe your monitor's actual refresh rate that, that might be the most noticeable difference here. All right, we've got Middle Earth Shadow of War, where we see the Ryzen 7 with a small lead that again would be hard to notice, but I wouldn't call it a tie. It does have a win. Uh, Strange Brigade, uh, I can't speak, guys. Strange Brigade, there we go. 1080p Ultra Async on DX12. We're seeing a small win. And Witcher 3, check that out. The 1% lows are the same but the average is almost 50 FPS higher, although both of them averaging over 200. So once again, how much are you really going to notice it? And we're back to the start here. So let's analyze this in a few ways. First of all, were AMD's claims true according to this reviewer's testing? I would say yes. AMD absolutely admitted that in a number of games, it would just tie the 50, uh, sorry, the 12900K, and that was absolutely the case. But they also claimed that in some games they would have a 10 to 20% lead. And I think we absolutely saw that in some cases, I think even like in Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Final Fantasy XV, it might've even been more than what AMD was claiming. Again, the exact scene of the game being benchmarked could be different between the two companies. And AMD was 1080p high, Whereas uh, the reviewer we just saw, I think was 1080p like maximum settings, except with a few tweaks that they noted. So overall, what do I think about this CPU? Well, here's the thing. So in my opinion, both of these are kind of silly for most people's gaming. You could get by with a much cheaper CPU. You don't really need this. However, um, if it's just for gaming, I think the 12900K is way too expensive. Whereas the 5800X3D is within the realm of, it might not be completely silly, especially if you're upgrading and you already have the motherboard. So if you're just upgrading an older Ryzen, you're on a compatible motherboard and slotting this in, I think that this could make a whole lot of sense actually. Um, if you want to just get the uh, longest life possible out of your system. I know a lot of people, once they have to upgrade their motherboard, they're just gonna build a whole new PC. So slotting in a new CPU and then uh, to get you through a couple more, one or two more GPU upgrades uh, could actually be a really nice way to, uh, way to extend the life of your system. And this will be the top end gaming CPU. However, again, when you're looking at frame rates as high as what we were just seeing there, are you really ever going to be CPU limited using the GPU and monitor resolution and settings that you actually use? Because if you're spending this much on a CPU, I would say odds are you have a high-end GPU, but you're also probably playing at least 1440p, maybe ultra wide 1440p, maybe even 4K, at which case you're almost never CPU limited. So I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Personally, for gaming CPUs, you know, I, 
I tend to go a little bit more mid-range myself because I think for gaming, you're just much more likely to be limited by that, um, uh, by the GPU. <laughs> but I, but I know a lot of other people are actually more into esports. If you're on the, and this is why I think this is kind of a bit of a sign up. But one reason why I think a lot of people disagree on PC building, and you know what? Uh, I guess I, I I could be a little bit bigger here for my final thoughts. Okay, a lot of people disagree on PC builds, especially when it comes to CPU and RAM. And I think it's because those people are targeting completely different types of PC gaming. Uh, people like me, while I will occasionally play competitive games, I'm not spending all day every day trying to be a competitive gamer and just like max out my rank. Now, when I was in high school, it was a different story. But you know, I'm 33 now, guys. I don't have time to be the best of the best in all of the multiplayer games. I spend a lot of my time playing single player games and maxing out the graphics settings. But there are people who buy a crazy expensive uh, graphics card, CPU, and RAM just to pair it with like a 1080p monitor, but like 240 hertz, 360 hertz, and they play ultra competitively and are looking for every single tiny fraction of a millisecond of performance. Performance. And for those people, if you're already on the AMD uh, platform, this 5800X3D might make sense. However, are those actually the titles that are sensitive to cash? Because it doesn't look like CSGO was particularly uh, sensitive to that. So you might want to look into whether the particular competitive games that you play are particularly cash sensitive once the full reviews are out and more people have tested these things. Um, Anyway, I think this is very solid. And again, I, it's so interesting to me that we see an update where, where AMD is going to be the, uh, you know, the gaming performance leader, whereas the Intel competition is going to be actually better for the multi-threading and productivity space, since that seems like such a reverse from you know, old school Ryzen stuff. Anyway, um, I've got to get to work, guys, speaking of being 33 and not having time to play games all day. So <laughs> anyway, I hope all of you have an excellent day and check out that full review I'll have linked in my description if you want to check out their 720p results and more of their full thoughts. I hope all of you have an excellent day.